Hello and welcome back to Living Our Best Life. My name is Keith and today I have the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. It's the latest pocket camera from DJI. It's been about three years since the DJI Pocket 2 came out. So this one has been very, very well anticipated and let me tell you, it does not disappoint. By now, you've probably already seen the millions and millions of unboxing videos with this camera, so I'm not gonna bore you with mine. I've already unboxed it and I've used it uh, for a little while. So, um, But I do wanna talk about some of the things that you may or may not decide that you want with this camera. I personally passed on the Creator Combo. The Creator Combo is 669 versus the standard combo of 519. So that's $150 difference. And I think the two biggest things that are in this combo that you may decide that you need or you may decide that you want to pass on are the DJI Mic 2 and the battery handle. Now, the reason why I passed on the Creator Combo is I already have the DJI Mic system. And with the USB-C port right here on the front, I can use my DJI mic with this camera and I don't, I don't need the DJI mic too. Uh, and I also don't think I need the battery handle. The battery handle actually clips on right here as well and gives you a couple of extra hours of battery time. But this thing actually lasts, so far it's lasted as long as I wanted it to last uh, at least a couple of hours. And, and with the fast charging on this, DJI says you can charge this thing to 80% in 18 minutes. So that's kind of counterproductive to trying to sell the battery handle to you when you can charge it in 18 minutes pretty much and get it back to where you can use it again. So I passed on the battery handle. I passed on the Creator Combo that had those things. Now there are a couple of things in the Creator Combo that I do want. I think I do want the wide angle lens at some point. Uh, it does give you a, a little bit extra field of view, but it's not a whole lot. I've seen enough videos with the field of view doesn't, it's not vast. It's, it's certainly minimal, but it's worth having. And I think you can pick up the lens separately for around 39 or maybe $49, but I'll eventually pick up one of those as well. The other things in the creator combo, I just didn't really see any need for. So I passed on it and went with the standard combo. So one of the things that comes in the creator combo that I didn't think I needed was a mini tripod. So you get a mini tripod that has a DJ, DJI label on it, but I think most of us probably already have mini tripods sitting around with quarter 20s on the bottom of them. So what I've decided to do with mine and to turn mine into what I would benefit from from the Creator Combo is number one, I just put this little mini tripod that I already have on it and then extend it. So now I have it on the, on the mini tripod. And then I have my DJI mic here, USB-C port here, It actually plugs right in. So you can see on the mini tripod, the DJI mic, then all I have to do is clip on one of my transmitters and I'm good to go. And then also this tripod, literally the one that I have anyway, has a real rubberized feel to it. So it makes an absolute fantastic grip. So when you wanna go out and actually talk to the camera or just video things in front of you that you do have a great handle to hold on to and move it around. And then should you decide that you do want to set it down somewhere, just like that, you can set it down. So I do love this little camera. I've taken it out probably three or four times and filmed with it. It is really, really cool. It's got some really new features that weren't on the, the previous versions. Uh, I know Active Track 6.0 is, is huge with this one and it really, really does track very well. So you'll see some video. I'm going to go out with it in a few minutes and, and film some and just show you some of the things that I, I do with mine. And I really do like this camera. This camera can become 
your everyday camera if you want it to, uh, especially if you do uh, the type of videos that we do, where we usually go out hiking, uh, we go, uh, we take our dog out, we also go out on our bikes, and this is not something I probably would put on the front of my bike, but when we get off of our bikes and adventure, I can carry it with me, and then I can still put the GoPro or the Osmo Action 3 on the front of my bike and mount it that way. We also go on cruises probably three or four times a year, and this is certainly one of the cameras you might would consider taking on a cruise because it's a little more inconspicuous than say a full frame camera or even a GoPro. But I think this can become your everyday camera. It can be something you use extensively, film all your videos on. I do know with the tracking on this thing that it follows you wherever you go and it definitely would be something that you could use if you were out filming by yourself. But anyway, let me get out here and and show you some of the things that, that I do with this camera. All right, so now I have the active track enabled. I'm also using the DJI mic. So I'm back here in this room and it's probably gonna lose me. And I'll, I'll actually go over here a little bit too, just to see. Yeah, so it's picking me up, picking me up. And then I'm gonna go around this corner and just see if it loses me. So I'm sure it's lost me by now. I'm gonna come back and see if it picks me back up, which it did. It actually lost me and then picked me back up when I came back in. As you see, I didn't touch the camera, but it picked me back up. That's actually pretty doggone cool that it lost me and picked me back up. That's, that's awesome. So I'm back out at the Ringgold Rail Trail this is probably my favorite place to come and film because it's such a beautiful place. It has three different areas where you can start at and it, it's just so quiet. There's rarely anybody here. It's such a beautiful place. So I like to come out here and film. There's nobody out here to bother me. And so now I'm checking out the, the Osmo Pocket 3. And actually I am filming in D-Log M. It's something that I never thought I would do. I usually just use the normal color profile and that's good enough for me. But since I discovered D-Log M, I kind of like it. So I'm gonna probably switch back and forth between them. But, but anyway, so I'm, I'm out here and gonna see number one, how the Osmo Pocket 3 does just as a vlogging camera, which I already know that answer to that because it's, it's like you can see the face tracking. I can move the camera out here. It stays on my face. I can move it up here. And so it sticks right with me. And so that's something that's really cool because a lot of times when you're walking, you kind of have to look ahead and you can't constantly be looking to make sure that you're in the frame. So I do like the fact that you do have that, that focus track, active track on your face. I'm going probably about a half a mile, maybe a little further down to the bridge. The bridge is still blocked, but you can actually get on it. And it's a beautiful little area. I wish they would fix it but it's got a couple of panels missing on the bridge and that's why it's, it's dangerous because uh, you could step through and fall down. I mean, the average person probably wouldn't step through, but it's possible. Definitely if you come out here with a, an animal or a small child, you're definitely gonna wanna make sure that you keep them away from those where the missing panels are on the bridge. But just taking a look around and seeing how beautiful it is. And as you can see, the, the leaves have pretty much peaked here probably about two weeks ago. Most of them are now on the ground. So with the Pocket 3, I think the biggest innovation of all was the larger screen. The fact that you can actually see and do things with this screen 
uh, it made it such a better option for me. And I know with the Pocket 2, the screen being so small, half of the things you couldn't see. And I just think that they simplified things a lot by, by giving you a bigger screen. And I know that was one of the things that was very frustrating for me and my wife. And I actually bought it for her. And she just never really, it just never really stuck with her because it, she was always frustrated with where the camera was pointing and she couldn't, she couldn't change the, the settings. And just so many things made it tough because of the smaller screen. But this screen uh, is so much bigger and so much more functional that I think if, uh, if you haven't tried a pocket camera before, this would be a, a great place to start because this camera uh, has all the functionality of an, an action camera, but with the gimbal, you have the stabilization already there, and you can pretty much do whatever you want to with it filming-wise, and you don't have to worry about shaky footage or any of that stuff. So the, if you haven't had a pocket camera before, this is definitely where to start at. I think one of the hard things about filming in the log profile is, is how brown and drab everything looks until you, until you do that color correction. And I started out myself with uh, just using the, the LUT that DJI provides on their website. And that in itself just makes a dramatic change to what you go out and film with it. And DJI has the LUT that works with the this camera, it also works with the Osmo Action 4, and it also works with uh, the Mini 4 Pro and the DJI Air 3. So these LUTs, once you kind of lay them on top of this video, make it really, really look good and make it stand out. And then if you want to add some more of your color correction to it, then you can. So if you haven't seen any of my other videos that I filmed out here on the Ringgold Rail Trail, you, you might not know that this is exactly that. It is a old rail trail that has been repurposed into a walking trail. And it's basically five miles from end to end. And I think back in 2018, Hurricane Michael came through here and we got a lot of rain, uh, a lot of flooding, and this bridge down here that I'm coming to, actually one of the, I guess, columns on the bottom of the bridge was damaged, and so it was unpassable for a while. I think that part's been fixed, but the, the things that haven't been fixed is the rails on the side of the bridge uh, are still missing some panels and that's an open space and it's dangerous for pretty much anybody. I don't really like getting near the open holes myself because I'm scared of heights, but I'll show you in a minute. So I haven't been doing any maintenance at all. You can see it's grown up on the bridge. And here are the panels that I told you about that are just open. So as you see, it's a uh, pretty good ways down, not a, not something I like to get close to. And any we bring our dog out here and it's very dangerous. We have to make sure that our dog is leashed and with us because she may would just wander over and, and boom, that's it. So, uh, and also the same thing for children. I would not never let a child come across this bridge without holding their hand or something because this is very dangerous. And the very reason why they don't want people on the bridge so as you see, there's the below the bridge. Beautiful little stream. I'm not sure. I'm trying to remember what the name of this river is. Maybe the Sandy River. Not 100% sure, but but anyway, as you can see from the damage, 
they actually put up a, a thing to keep you from passing. Now the odd thing is, is if you look on the other side, there's no blockade on the other side. So if you come from the other side of the trail, which has a trailhead about two miles that way, then you can just freely come on across the bridge. But as it is, you kind of got to climb over a little bit to, to get across it. It's actually quite beautiful from either side. This is the opposite side of the bridge. And as you see, it's a little bit bigger than a creek and a little bit bigger than a stream. And I'm pretty sure it's the Sandy River, but I could be wrong about what river it is, but I'll check and try to confirm that so I'm not wrong about it. Another thing about this too is this thing, when they call it the pocket camera, it, it really can fit in your pocket. And now with the little case that they give you, let's see if I can find it. Um, the little case that they give you. So when you put it in this case, you turn the screen to the lock position and then you lay it down, screen down into this little case here. And when you turn the power off, the camera locks the gimbal in place and you just lay it in here and it doesn't move at all. So that's truly a pocket camera. I get some shots of some of these golden trees in here and see how they look on the, the camera. Now, I, I have not did anything other than 4K30. I haven't done slow motion. I haven't done low light. I mean, now it's actually getting, it's not getting, the sun hasn't gone down yet, but I could possibly switch to low light, but I don't think I'd benefit too much from it now. But it looks like that the people that I have seen posting videos, it looks like the low light definitely is a, a huge advantage over some of the other cameras. Definitely the Pocket 2 and definitely the, uh, the Osmo Action 4 and GoPro Hero 12. So this could be the best low light camera out there. So I really did try to run the battery down as, as much as I could and I'm still in the 60s. So again, it just, it just you know, there's, it's almost like they made the, they made the battery on this thing so good why would you need a battery, uh, extra battery handle? And with the fast charging of charging to 80% in 18 minutes, that just doesn't make sense to spend any kind of money on a, uh, on a battery handle. So I think I answered my question there whether or not I would buy one of those. I guess if I had one complaint and I looked for it and I thought, well, I missed it. And I went back and watched a couple of YouTube videos to see if I missed it. But there is no button to switch from video to photo. Um, in order to do that, you have to touch the screen in order to switch from photo to video. So it's been nice to have a button, but they only have two buttons. They have the, they have the little joystick and they have a record button. So they they took those extra two buttons away and those two buttons could have been quite confusing. So I know they were confusing for us with the pocket too. So maybe that's the reason they, they took them off. So I guess the inconvenience of having to tap the screen to switch to photo is, is just one of the necessary evils, but it would have really been nice. I know if you single tap, let's see, I don't, I'm not sure what single tap does, double tap, actually recenters the gimbal, triple tapping on the joystick, turns the camera around. So I'm not sure what single tap does. Oh, I, it took the tracking off. That's what it does. So single tap turns off the tracking. Um, it didn't turn it back on either. So, and then the double tap would recenter the gimbal. Face track is back on now. I didn't have to do that. Just recentering the gimbal actually turned the the face tracking back on. And then of course, if I tap it three times, it spins around and now you're facing forward. So it's really, a really neat little camera. If you're 
thinking about getting one, I'd say if you don't mind paying what I feel like is a little too much for it, go ahead and jump in because it's a great little camera. Again, I just feel like with the GoPro at, at $399, the Osmo Action 4 at $399, pretty much uh, that's kind of a ceiling for action cameras. And for this thing to be, uh, I would have felt better at 450 but 519 I guess, is what they decided on. And then, of course, 669 for the Creator Combo. And I would imagine the biggest chunk of that extra $150 is that DJI mic. And again, they haven't said whether or not you'll be able to buy that mic separately or not. Uh, if they're even going to sell it that way, or are they coming out with a new mic system, or what they're doing. But as for now, plugging your DJI mic one receiver into the Pocket 3 and then using the transmitter on your body is the only way to actually get the DJI mic to work. There's no, there's no way you can actually Bluetooth it to the actual Pocket camera. Maybe one day they will. It would have even been nice if they would have let the mic from the Pocket 2 work with this camera, but that doesn't work either. So, but the cool thing is, is basically any, if you have any kind of mic at all that, that uses USB-C, you can use it with this camera. I use my Rode Wireless Me with it and it worked perfectly. The only thing with the Rode is I had no way to actually, you know, there's no cold shoe or anything like that. So, I just had to, I, I got a Ulanzi uh, handle that's got a quarter 20 on it that has a has a cold shoe on it and I could put it on that and use it. But like I said, this is the easiest setup for me to have the, the DJI mic receiver just plugged in USB-C on the camera and then have them just wear the mic. It's just an easy setup. So I just got back from out filming with the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. I filmed a long time. I, I know I talked a long time. And when I just checked, still have 60% battery on this thing. So just another affirmation that you really don't need the battery handle. I mean, if you, if you have it, you have it. But you don't really need to spend that extra money if that's one of the reasons. But yeah, 60% battery life still on it. I'm getting ready to uh, look at the footage and put something together, but it, it, it's such a great little camera and I really do think it can be your everyday camera. Uh, I'm, I'm probably not ever gonna stop using my GoPro and my Osmo Action 3 uh, or even my Insta360 cameras, but it, it's a great addition to the family and it's something that I know I'll use a lot. Uh, and it's very, very inconspicuous. Beautiful footage this thing puts out. I mean, it's just amazing. And so I'm very satisfied with it so far. I hope you enjoy the footage. Uh, I, I'm going to uh, gonna add that DJI LUT to it to bring that color out in it and hopefully it'll look good. But you know, it's with, with it being, being fall and almost winter, it's, it's pretty brown out there. So hopefully it'll look good, but I enjoyed going out with this camera. I've been out with it, this is about the third time that I've been out with it and I've gotten some really, really good footage with it. Um, before I go, I, I thought I would give a little tip for those of you that have the DJI mic, that if you actually own the mic and you also own a Insta360, um, either a Go2 or a Go3, and you have the pendant, that you use to put your Go 2 or Go 3 on. Uh, here's a, a quick tip. You can put this on. I do this all the time. I just thought about maybe, I've never seen anybody else mention it, so I thought maybe I would, I would show it. You put the pendant on and you put it under your shirt and you take your, you take your DJI mic, boom. Sets right there. It's ab absolutely perfect to get the the, the perfect sound. It's not, you don't have to put it up here and clip it on your shirt. 
um, nor do you have to have it hanging you know, off of your shirt. So this is very solid on my shirt. So if you have one of those Go3 or Go2 magnets, the pendants, uh, or any pe pendant magnet that, that would work with this, but this is what I use when I go out with my uh, DJI mics because I don't have to worry about it falling off or getting in the way or anything. So anyway, thanks for watching and uh, please do like and subscribe. Uh, channel's growing you know, ever so slightly. Uh, I need all the help I can get. So I appreciate all you that post comments and keep watching and we'll keep trying to get better. Thanks again and we'll see you on the next one.